Mm. Hey, what are you doing? I'm packing a gift. Why do you have to pack it? I can't possibly give it like this. I'll have to pack it in something and then present it. There is something in cells that does something like this exactly. Mm -hmm. Golgi bodies, right? Absolutely. That's more interesting. Let's stop packing and let's start talking about Golgi bodies. Sure. Golgi bodies were first observed in 1867 by George. But it was in 1898 that Camilo Golgi actually discovered them and described them as reticular structures inside the cell which means that these are networks that are present inside the cell. He was working on nerve cells of barn owl and he was using metals to color the membranes that are present inside the nerve cells and with that technique which is called metal impregnation method he colored the Golgi bodies and described them as reticular structure. In 1954 Dalton and Felix studied the ultrastructure of Golgi bodies under electron microscope. The Golgi bodies or the Golgi apparatus consists of smaller Golgi structures that come together in certain cells of animals to form an apparatus which is an organized structure. So basically the Golgi apparatus is made up of several different types of Golgi bodies that come together in a certain aggregate and get arranged to form the Golgi apparatus. The most important part or the most abundant part of the Golgi apparatus is the Golgi cisterni. The cisterni they are sheath like structures, they are double membrane bound, they are sheath like structures which are arranged parallel to each other. Now when they are arranged parallel to each other, the part of the Golgi body facing the endoplasmic reticulum is known as the cis phase or the forming phase, whereas the part which is further away from the endoplasmic reticulum is known as the trans phase or the maturing phase. All the proteins that are produced from the endoplasmic reticulum enters into the Golgi apparatus through the formative phase. When it passes from one cisterny to the next with the help of vacuoles, they start getting matured and modified. So when the proteins are passing from the formative phase, the cisterny present in the formative phase to the next one, to the next and from there towards the maturing phase, the proteins are actually getting modified, matured and they are new thug structures are being added to it. By the time the protein has reached the last cisterny which is present in the maturing phase, they are fully formed and matured. The next structure that is present in the Golgi apparatus are the vesicles. The vesicles are small membrane bound sacs that carry the proteins or the carbohydrates from one cisterny to the next. So once the protein has been adequately modified in the first cisterny, it gets packed in a small vesicle and from that cisterny it travels to the next where the vesicle fuses with the cisterny and releases the protein into the next cisterny. After modifications are done in the second cisterny, Similarly, another vesicle carries it from the second to the third cisterny, so on and so forth. The third structure that is present in Golgi apparatus are the vacuoles. Usually, the vacuoles are present on the ends of the cisterny. Vesicles are present in between the cisterny. They are also present towards the ends of the cisterny, but vacuoles are usually present towards the ends of the cisterny. What are these structures? The vacuoles are membrane bound sacs that contain the product that has been formed by the Golgi bodies or the cisterny of the Golgi bodies. So once the proteins have fully matured or the carbohydrate has been adequately modified or the lipid has been adequately modified, they accumulate at the end of the cisterny which swells up like this. This swelling eventually pinches off as sacs which are called vacuoles that contain the modified protein carbohydrate or fat. Golgi apparatus can also have tubular structures like endoplasmic reticulum. They are usually present in the forming phase where finger like projections come out 
which are known as fenestrations. In case of animal cells, especially in vertebrates, most of the cells have the Golgi apparatus in a localized region, which is usually very near the nucleus and close to the endoplasmic reticulum as well. In invertebrates and also in the nerve cell of vertebrates, the Golgi bodies are not producing a Golgi apparatus in a localized region. So they remain freely floating, singly, individually floating in the cytoplasm. We find something similar in case of plants. In most of the textbooks that we follow, the Golgi body in plant cell is represented like this. However, a more accurate way of representing the Golgi bodies in plant cells would be in this manner where the Golgi bodies do not form the Golgi apparatus. In fact, the Golgi bodies, they roam around freely and here they are known as dictyosomes. The Golgi apparatus has varied functions in different types of cells. But the basic function of Golgi apparatus remains modification, packaging and secretion of substances. When we talk about modification, inside the Golgi apparatus, the proteins, the carbohydrates, the lipids that have been formed by the endoplasmic reticulum get modified. So after being formed from the endoplasmic reticulum, these raw protein, carbohydrates and fat, they enter into the Golgi apparatus where they are added to other structures or they are folded and modified to give rise to the tertiary structure of protein or maybe uh, lipid is added to protein, protein is added to lipid, carbohydrates are added to other structures to form conjugate protein, conjugate lipid, conjugate carbohydrates, for example lipoproteins. Once this modification is complete, then the proteins are packed in vacuoles. This is again a function of Golgi apparatus which is, which is packaging. So all those substances which either need to be present inside the cell or need to be given out of the cell, they are packaged inside a vacuole. Just like we gift wrap our gifts similarly, these proteins, carbohydrate and fat which have matured inside the Golgi bodies now get packaged or surrounded in a membrane to form a vacuole. And finally, depending on what protein, what carbohydrate or what lipid it is, it can either be stored inside the cell in, in that vacuole or the vacuole can release it outside the cell by diffusing or fusing with the cell membrane. Usually, in case of sperm, we find that the sperm requires certain enzymes for digesting the membranes that surround the egg. And the Golgi bodies that are present in the sperm cell contains those enzymes. So during the formation of sperm, all the Golgi bodies of the sperm cell come together to form a single sac which is called acrosome. This acrosome remains as a cap on the nucleus of the sperm and on reaching the egg, the acrosome bursts open releasing the enzymes that will digest the wall of the or the membranes covering the egg. In case of plants, during cell division, when uh, the cell wall needs to be formed, cellulose or uh, calcium pectate which is the primary uh, constituent of the middle lamella, cellulose which is the primary constituent of the primary cell wall and the secondary cell wall, they are deposited in between the two daughter nuclei. This deposition is called phragmoplast and it is the start of division of the cytoplasm that is cytokinesis. But who deposits these materials? Golgi bodies present in the plant cell bring the constituents essential and deposit it in between the two nuclei so that the cell wall, new cell wall, a fresh cell wall can be formed in between the two daughter nuclei. It therefore helps in cell division as well. The Golgi bodies are also responsible for the formation of plasma lemma or cell membrane in plant cells after cell division and it is also responsible for the formation of hormones that are produced in different endocrine glands. So the endoplasmic reticulum, Golgi bodies and lysosomes together form 
a system which is known as the girl complex g e r l where g stands for golgi bodies e r stands for endoplasmic reticulum and l stands for lysosomes why is it a complex because they work in coordination with each other how the endoplasmic reticulum forms the primary protein structures the primary carbohydrate and lipid structures it is sent to the golgi bodies the golgi bodies modify these proteins and give it their final form modified active form and then some of these proteins which are enzymes they are packed inside membranes to form lysosomes so these three structures in a cell you will see is also very closely related to each other they are very closely placed so that they can be in communication with each other and together they form this girl complex all right so that was all about golgi bodies now let me ask you a question can you tell me the name of a few cells of the human body which are devoid of golgi bodies altogether do let me know your answers in the comments below i look forward to reading your answers always i really hope you enjoyed today's video do hit the like button and share it with your friends if you did if you haven't subscribed to our youtube channel hit the subscribe button right now and click on the notification bell do check out the full course on our website and android app manoj academy links are given below let's stay connected and let's keep learning together golgi bodies were first observed in 1867 eta to mone ache scientist na amra to bhule gechi ire george in 1954 কি করেছি না আমার হাত ব্যথা ওহো 